Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Anna Rapel. I am your host of At The Stage, presented by Camp Broadway. With our friends at Streamable Learning, I am talking to you live from my apartment in New York connecting you with Broadway professionals, both on and off the stage, connecting them to you, our friends, our families, our students and teachers. And I'm so happy you've chosen to join us for the next 35 minutes or so. Uh, as I said earlier, start thinking of those questions you have, and I promise I will get to as many of them as possible. You can use our Q&A feature, and um, we'll get to those with our guests. And I'm so excited to introduce you our guest today. Our guest is Molly Braverman. Hi, Molly. Hi, everyone. So Molly is the director of the Broadway Green Alliance. She previously served as the managing director of Theater Horizon, a nonprofit professional theater company in Norristown, Pennsylvania. She's also worked as a stage manager on Broadway, on tour, and regionally, having spent three years on the road with the national tour of Wicked, and continue to serve as a substitute manager on Wicked and Hamilton. She also founded the, the Philadelphia Green Theater Alliance, a regional chapter of the Broadway Green Alliance, and a graduate of Columbia University. Hi, Molly, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a treat to How be here. Be here, yes. Right. How are you? Where are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. I am here in my home in Philadelphia where I live uh, with my husband and our very happy dog. So happy you're home. So happy. She's never been happier. I love it. Um, so we have so much to talk about today. So before we get to the Broadway Green Alliance, which we'll get to quickly, do you have, can you share with us some, one of your earliest memories of theater? Did you perform as a child or were you always sort of more interested in the stage management side? Yeah, yeah I was always a backstage kid. Um, but I, I mean, my earliest memory of theater is honestly in my parents' basement uh, where I was. I mean, I can't remember a time in my life without theater. Uh, in the basement, I guess I was on stage as well. Um, but I was also producing, directing, uh, lighting, designing with any lamps available. Uh, <laughs> I gave the adults tickets that they had to use to come downstairs. Uh, and if you ask my sister, even if I gave her the leading role, I was still the lead. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's I was very excited when I could get to school and had an outlet uh, to really um, be on, you know, be backstage and, and do do my thing outside of the basement. Were you able to um, stage manage and hone those skills in high school? Were there classes you took or things that you, outlets you, like you said, outlets you had for that passion? Yeah, absolutely. I was really fortunate. I had wonderful theater teachers and outlets along the way um, through the public school I went through. Uh, so even back, back in middle school, um, before I was stage managing before I knew I was stage managing, I <laughs> they just sort of shoved me backstage and said, okay, fine, do stuff. And so I was, I was making color coded props tracking before I knew that's what it was called. Um, and just bossing people around and, and running the scene changes. And so I think it's really thrilling. Um, I don't know if anyone watching can, can recognize themselves in that, but you know, when you're allowed to just sort of run with what you, you run backstage and, and get inventive and figure out what that is, even without putting a, a title on it. Um, and then by the time I got to high school, I figured out that what I was doing was stage managing and I had a lot of fun doing that. Did you um, continue that education through college? I did, though not entirely formally. I didn't go to college for stage management. I didn't go the BFA route. I went and got a uh, liberal arts degree and stage managed on the side through student productions and through, I went to school in New York, so I interned every summer and every chance I got and really sort of went more of an apprenticeship route for stage management and learned, you know, reading and writing and philosophy during the day. To get a, you got, you're a well-rounded student. Well-rounded. I love that. I think in the arts, it's sometimes, you know, it's important that we hone those skills, but that we also you know, learn, learn other things too, so that we have something to make art about. Absolutely. For, for friends that are watching that are maybe um, young, on the younger side, I, this is a big question, but can you sort of explain what a stage manager does? Sure. It's a big one. Yeah, it is a big one. Stage managers are, um, 
or the, the representative, they're the, the manager in the room. So a stage manager works from a show from its very beginning stages all the way through the run of the show. And so for different levels of production, that might be you, you working on a show for years, like Wicked, that's been around for many, many years, or a show that might just go up for a weekend. Um, and so a stage manager starts with a show from the beginning through the very early meetings um, working with all departments, a stage manager is a, the creative organizer. So they understand all the different facets of the production and help them organize together and speak with each other and speak across their different languages um, and organizes all of that and schedules everything together all the way into tech and through the uh, dress rehearsal process. And they're in charge of that room, organizing everyone together. And then once the show goes up, they do something called calling the show. So that's like, just like in uh, a music director, a conductor conducts an orchestra, the stage manager conducts the technical aspects of the show. So they're literally the one that says, go every time a light cue changes or a scenery element moves. So they, what I like to say, conduct the tech. Love that. that is a, that's a great comparison of, of, we see the conductor when we see a show, we see the conductor in the front and we don't get to see the conductor of backstage and that's what the stage manager does. Yeah, it's very so fun cool. and very creative if that's something that appeals to you. And then not to make the big jump, but and now you work for the Broadway Green Alliance. So can you explain to us what that what that company is? Absolutely. So it's not a it it is a jump, but I will say that um, something that's always been very important to me throughout my life is the connection between arts and activism. So as artists, we have a huge voice, right? We can really change hearts and minds with what we do. And so whatever that, whatever is important to you, you can affect that through your art. And something that's always been important to me is our environment and our planet. And, yeah, you know, and we're, we're dealing with a very big crisis in front of us right now, right? We're all sitting at home. We're talking to each other through screens because of the coronavirus pandemic. And that's a crisis that's happening concurrently at the same time as our climate crisis. And so I think we, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. That's a whole other <laughs> conversation. But yeah. something that's been important to me for a long time is the crisis that's building the climate crisis. And so... Uh, the Broadway Green Alliance was formed 12 years ago um, because a lot of artists got together and, and thought, what can we do as artists using our voice and our art to make a difference in the environment and to move the needle, to, to make change happen? And so the Broadway Green Alliance was formed in order to educate, motivate, and inspire theater artists and all of our patrons, all theater fans, to become environmentally friendlier. And so what, and so what can shows do? What, what do they do to help, like you said, move the needle? Absolutely. So um, what, one of the main things the Broadway Green Alliance does is we have a green captain in every show. And this is something that everyone watching can do as well. So on Broadway, every show has a volunteer. So someone on the production, and this can be the star of the show, like Audra McDonald was a green captain, or it can be a stage manager, like I was a green captain. So anyone on the show can be a green captain. And that's someone who volunteers and serves as the liaison between the show and us and the Broadway Green Alliance. And we give that person tools and ideas to combine with their own ideas about how to make that show greener. So how to actually take action on that show and then also to, again, use their voice to inspire others, the patrons of that show, to be greener as well. Is there any, um, act is, uh, not activity, but are there things that our, our young actors and actresses can do at their theaters at home that, they, that help make their shows greener? Great question. Um, so yes, absolutely. I should mention, I forgot to, that this Green Captain program isn't just on Broadway. It is in colleges and universities and a lot of high schools and other show and other theaters have started doing it as well. So you can reach out to us uh, via the Broadway Green Alliance website to sign up to be a Green Captain on your show or at your school. So that's one thing. Um, and some great ideas are um, that, uh, for example, on Broadway, we've stopped using 
disposable water bottles, right? You're doing a show, you obviously need to stay hydrated, you know, keep the cores nice and, and <laughs> hydrated. So one thing to do is to encourage, is to both yourself as a personal action and then encourage your castmates and your fellow crew members to forego disposable single use plastic water bottles for a reusable water bottle. So that's one easy action. And then to look around and see what makes most sense for your theater space. Um, and that might be, maybe everyone's already doing that. <laughs> that's easy, we're already there, everyone does that. So maybe next up is coffee cups or tea, right? We all like to drink tea in the theater. Uh -huh. so maybe next up is tea. So. Those, and those are such doable steps that everyone can do in their, where, wherever their theater is. Exactly. And we've got a long list of other actions on our website as well at broadwaygreen.com by department. So if you are an aspiring um, lighting designer at your high school or wherever you are, we've got ideas for you. Or if you're an aspiring costume designer, ideas for you. And for all you actors, we've got plenty of ideas for you. That's fantastic. We'll put up the um, we'll put up the website in the chat box, and then um, uh, oh, I might have oh, an Earth Day. So Earth Day is next week. What do you guys have planned? I'm sure you have a full week or full day of of activities. We do, yes. So it's Earth Day next week, next Wednesday, and um, we are celebrating. We are marking the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So we've had 50 Earth Days thus far. And obviously this Earth Day is going to look a little different because we can't all be together in person. So we're going to celebrate it virtually. Um, and this Earth Day is going to be a lot about how we can come together and heal as a planet and what that conversation looks like. So we are going to be marking it two ways and you can tune in and join us. The first is on Sunday. We are kicking off Earth Day with a lot of virtual performances from performers you'll probably recognize. We have the entire company of Jagged Little Pill joining us, so um, singing uh, one of the favorites from Jagged. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got Beth Malone, we've got Rob McClure, uh, a lot of favorites will be joining us. Uh, Sia Renee, uh, Elsa from Frozen will be singing a song and all of the songs will be talking about the earth and we'll be having some conversations about again actions that we can do all together, especially right now while we're at home. Um, and then Extra Special is going to be on Earth Day itself. Those are, some of you may be familiar with Greta Thunberg and her Fridays for the Future and the Global Youth Strike. And just like you, our youth members of the Broadway community are also familiar with that and joining together for a big, beautiful song as part of the virtual Global Youth Strike on Earth Day next Wednesday. And so we will post, we don't know what time their song will be, but we will absolutely post it on our social media. So you can follow us at Broadway Green Alliance on Instagram and Facebook. And we will post when their song will be. And you can join along and see not just how they're participating, but how young people from around the world are having a discussion about what they can do as young people to stand up and fight for their, for their future and for your future. Fantastic. That, that sounds like so many wonderful people coming together. It's yeah. just, it's just wonderful. I love it. I have a couple of questions people have, um, have thrown at you already. So Susan wants to know, are there a lot of, op excuse me, are there a lot of opportunities for young women on the technical side of the business? That's a great question. Yes, there are a lot of opportunities for young women on the technical side and more and more over time, you know, it's, it can be harder for women across the board, as, as some of you may feel, to, um, to break into the business, but that is changing. And, um, and there's women who are in leadership roles up in all different areas of the theater. And so I encourage you to um, find those women and talk to them and interview them and let them be your steward into the business. But there are opportunities in every sector of the theater for women and, uh, and we're making great strides. Love that. Um, Dinah wants to know, what was your schedule like when you stage managed the show? What time we, we've heard from some actors of when they got there and their pre-show ritual. So what was your, what your pre-show ritual? Great. Or time, um, 
Sure. So obviously that changes whether you're on a Broadway show or working on a regional show. So different shows have different schedules, but I'll share my Broadway schedule with you uh, or my tour schedule. They're, they're similar. Um, so actors get there. You might have heard from actors who get there at half hour. Um, so stage managers get there earlier than that. We get there what's called hour before half hour. So <laughs> we, we're there at the theater longer than actors because um, we have to get the show ready. So we have to get there an hour before half hour in order to let everyone know who is in and out of the show that day. So that's our mo first important job of the, of the day when we get to the theater. So we, throughout the day, the production stage manager, so the head stage manager, will learn from the actors if an actor is out sick or if someone's on vacation um, for whatever reason, we find out who is in and out of the show and then we type that up and we have to distribute it to every department because every it's important for every department. Wardrobe, costumes has to know uh, sound has to know they have to switch the microphones. Scenery might have to know. Some of the set height might have to adjust if, different, if an understudy's in, right? If Elphaba's in and we have a short Elphaba versus a tall <laughs> Elphaba, we have to change that. So that's our first important job and we do that at hour before half hour. And then what, and then what is your role during the show. I mean, like you said, you conduct it in the back. There are different, there's not just one stage manager, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. So um, on, uh, again, on every show, there might be a different number of stage managers. Um, on the Wicked tour, we had three stage managers when I was out on tour for three years. Um, and it took two stage managers to do the show every night, but we had three. Um, because the production stage manager, the head stage manager, um, it stays in the office in order to help um, plan for the future, to do scheduling and to rehearse. I think something that gets overlooked on long run shows is how much rehearsal there is because there's new people coming in and out of the show. You have to rehearse the understudies. Um, and so there's constant rehearsal. So that head stage manager is often in rehearsal. And then the other two stage managers run the show. So we take turns. You're either calling the show, what I talked about, remember, conducting <laughs> all of the technical elements. You have your script open and you're calling the show, which keeps you very busy. There's lots of cues in a Wicked. Um, or you're what's called on deck, which means this might be familiar to some of you if you're wearing all black and you're on deck running a lot of the cues backstage. So you're on your feet in the wings and you're making sure the props are where they need to be, and you've got your flashlight, right? I'm sure a lot of you do this uh, in, in your school shows. Um, and so you're on deck and you're also on your feet and a little more flexible than the calling stage manager for emergencies. Do you, um, do you find that uh, there were skills that you discovered in high school or even earlier on that like you said, you, you sort of stage managed your whole life. So there were there things you noticed about yourself where you're like, oh, I'm really good at organizing or that sort of helped you think that this was the path to go. Definitely. Um, I was reflecting before this conversation about what, what about stage management, you know, was so special. And an early memory came to me uh, when I was stage managing in high school. I was stage managing a performance of Cinderella. Uh, and right before our very first show, our opening night, opening weekend, uh, and it was, I mean, all the audience was in the auditorium. Everyone was ready to go. And I was upstairs and I was calling the show. We called the show in, in high school and, um, and our headsets went out completely dead. We were about to begin. And so I had about five or 10 minutes to figure out what to do. And it was my first moment of being in charge and being the person who had to creatively problem solve with my teammates, with the, with the people in the show, how to move us forward. Because, you know, the, the adage, we, we want the show to go on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the ideal. Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, and so leading my team of creative problem solvers, we were able to figure it out. And I, I in my memory, I had seven limbs because I was pointing at cues and, and the spotlight operators like moved close to me. And I think I was, I, I, I don't remember entirely how we pulled it off, but we made it through the show without headsets and back in the olden days before <laughs> so I couldn't even text people and right. um, and we pulled it off and the feeling of that accomplishment of leading again creative problem solvers together of collaboration um, of and that success of putting art on stage through this teamwork. Uh, just sealed the deal. That was it. This is what we were going to do for this is this was what I was going to do and um, And the fact again that that I was able to do it using my skill set my skill set of um, Of calm under pressure, which is I think a very important skill for stage managers Yes. Um, again and of organization and thoughtfulness and again that that magic sauce, which is, I think, why we're all here in this Zoom call right now that theater brings to the table, which is the ultimate teamwork. Um, because we all have the, we all have a, one goal, which is to make art together um, and to deliver for our audiences, again, with the hope that we are going to open some hearts and minds in that room. And I, I would assume that these are all the same skill sets that you bring to Broadway Green Alliance, which makes you a fantastic director. The collaboration and the teamwork and, and that passion uh, just makes that job so, so fun. Yeah, I think so. I think that that's, you know, we're all in it together with, again, and you're right, I guess, ultimately the same goal that we, we are in this to try to open hearts and minds and it's theater people doing that work. Um, which is truly beautiful. And there, there are some key principles for the Broadway Green Alliance that I love and that emulate sort of what has brought me this far. Um, and I'll share one of, one of them right now because I think it's so important, which is the Broadway Green Alliance believes that it's just, it's impossible to be green. You can only be greener. And I think that's so fundamental because I think sometimes we, we hear organizations say, you have to be this way, right? You have to be better, do better. No, it, being green is an impossible goal, except if you're Elphaba or Kermit, right? Okay, they, they can be green, right? They, green. That's, they get a pass. <laughs> Otherwise, for all of us, if we say be green, we're, we're setting failure. We're setting ourselves up for failure. But what we ask of everyone is to think about how you, how can you be a little bit greener tomorrow than you were today, right? And then, yeah. and then go from there to maybe how can I be a little bit greener next month, right? And so just that idea is just to think about, you know, in, in, in your life, how, what one green action can you take? And it's personal because what, I might want to do or what my theater company might want to do what feels right what moves us is different than what might move you right or what might move Claire versus Katie right <laughs> um, so I think that that's a really beautiful principle that the BGA is founded upon I love that uh, and one more thing is that um, change does not result from one big action right? The climate crisis didn't happen because of one big bad. It happened because of these actions that compounded upon each other, cumulative things that got us to where we are today. And so in order to undo them, we have to undo each action. So what we each do, that one action that might feel small, right? Switching to reusable water bottles. Some of you might be thinking, small potatoes, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but if we all do it, if all high school theater companies switch to that, think about what difference that makes. So we're all pieces of that puzzle. And so billions of small actions do add up. And so that's the BGA second principle. And I think that fits so beautifully into the philosophy of so many theater artists. Absolutely. And, and, that, and that it's the little actions. It's, it's not a giant thing. It's, it's just the little ones at a time and then, and then you can make a difference. Exactly. Um, I have maybe a controversial question here. Okay. 
Are you ready? Um, I'm ready. Do you think playbills will be replaced someday? <laughs> that is controversial. Someday, yeah, I do. Down the road, one day. Tomorrow, not yet. Not yet. Um, but I think it's not going to start with playbill. I think it starts. Ready? Ready, everyone? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm sitting. I'm sitting. Say that again? It starts in schools. I think it starts mm -hmm. with the people on this call. I think it starts in smaller theaters. And I think people on this call are the ones who are the change makers. And so it's up to um, people maybe outside of Broadway to begin to make that change and to show it's possible and to show that people still read them and they're not gonna open their phones in the middle of the 11th hour number, <laughs> right? Um, and to show that that change is possible and that we can switch to digital playbills and then it'll the change will find its way to Broadway. Wow, that's great. <laughs> you, you were ready for that one. Um, what, um, how do stage managers find jobs? Because we've talked a little bit about the audition process, but that's different for stage managers. Yeah, that's fair. It's not always easy. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a couple of places stage managers can find jobs. Um, in the regional space, there are a lot of different um, job listing boards. Um, Playbill.com has a great job board. I'm sure that's been spoken about already. <laughs> um, and uh, and in depending on where you want to look for work, there's different uh, places. I live in Philadelphia. There's a fantastic job board here in Philadelphia um, and uh, Theater Philadelphia. And so there's different places. And then like anything, it's um, meeting people and uh, doing internships and connecting with stage managers in the business to begin to um, make a name for yourself and and connect with stage managers so that when jobs open you're you're there and ready to take them do you find um sometimes a job depends upon a recommendation or a mentor or that relationship you build in a show um sure yeah no i think that you know this or is just that you're, sorry just that you're um your um, reputation follows you. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, your reputation very much follows you. I think that's true everywhere and especially in the theater, which is a, a small community in the end. Um, I think that I, I heard a, a friend speak recently in a Q&A speaking about how um, kindness can matter um, often as much as your audition. And I think that that is so true. Um, how you behave um, towards others and in a room and in the space truly matters. This is a small industry and people want to work with people who are kind and good to others and that follows you. Um, so, you know, being, being a kind and good person is important not just because it's the right thing to do, but it does help you get jobs. So, yeah. um, Okay, two more questions. Um, were there any, I'm sure, mishaps during your time as a stage manager? And, and like you said, with the headsets, what, what happened? How were, how were things solved? Any, any stories to share? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a good one. <laughs> Uh, there's tons of mishaps all the time. That's the joy of live theater, right? That's right. We, we all love our mishap stories. Um, what's a fun one? Uh, let's see. I know, picture on the spot, sorry. No, 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 I'm trying to think of a, one that translates well. Um, there was, <laughs> there was one time I, this is just a funny one. Um, <laughs> So on tour, when I was calling Wicked, um, when you, so something that you might not know is that many shows on Broadway are called backstage. So I know when I was in high school and even in college, when I would call the show, um, and even for those of you in tech who are doing things, many of it is you're in front of the house, right? You're all the way in the back of the theater, um, sitting in front and you get a nice, bird's eye view of the, the space. Everything. 
right? But uh, on Broadway and on tour, most shows, most stage managers sit back in the wings. So off stage left or off stage right, and you're calling the show off of monitors. Uh, so that was something very new for me to get used to when I moved into that space. And so on the Wicked tour, I was very happily calling the show one evening off of my monitors, off of my little built booth. And all of a sudden, I thought I was getting a case of vertigo because it looked like everything was swaying. And I was like, what? Oh no, I'm like, something's wrong with me. And then I realized it's not me. The entire monitor stack is swaying. <laughs> And so I start to panic and then I realize, no, it's swaying backwards and it's starting to fall over. And so I reach out and I grab it and then I'm just holding this very heavy wooden <laughs> container full of monitors while I'm calling the show. And of course, during a very busy cue sequence for those wicked fans, it was in the middle of one short day which as you know, is very busy. Um, and so I say on headset to my crew, I say the call desk is falling over <laughs> and nobody believes me because that sounds crazy. Um, and so they go, haha, Molly, that's nice. I said, no, 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 the no. call desk is falling over. <laughs> I'm holding it. <laughs> and then I cannot, properly use my hands to do what I'm supposed to be doing in that moment. Um, so I start saying it instead, and then they finally believed me and the crew comes rushing over to save me from holding these very heavy call desks, which I felt at that point was, you know, one of those moments where you can lift a car, like I shouldn't have been able to hold that much weight. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's one of those. Uh, superhero powers. I was a superhero <laughs> for holding the call desk up during one short day, calling Wicked. I can do anything. <laughs> that is, that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, I have one last question. So Camp Broadway, uh, who pr produces this fantastic series, our motto is develop your character. And can you just in a short, I mean, shortly tell us what character means to you? Sure. I think, uh, you know, character is, is your integrity. It's what is meaningful to you. And so to me, I think that is using your voice for what is important to you and what you believe in um, and making sure that you're using your art for what you believe in. Perfect. Uh, we have a special treat. We're going to end with a video, which I'm going to have Molly explain in a second. Um, feel free to, if you have to log off before, we're just going to end with that. We are going to come back next Thursday, not on Monday, but on Thursday with a very special guest, Mr. Tony Vincent. So get ready for that same time, 1.30. Molly, tell us about this video we're going to watch. Sure. So as I mentioned, we have green captains all over Broadway, all over the country, soon to be in all of your schools. Um, and uh, one of our green captains on Hamilton, Seth Stewart, uh, pulled in a friend uh, for a very special video that they made for Earth Day a couple years ago. And so in honor of our upcoming Earth Day, I'm going to show it all of you. And I have a feeling you're going to recognize his very special friend. I think so. so. Yeah, just a guess. So let me uh, screen share this and uh, can I say goodbye now? Right. Oh, we'll, we'll say goodbye later okay. too. All right, I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see if I do this correctly. Hey everybody, it's Seth Stewart, Lin Man with Hamilton. I'm the Green Captain for Broadway Green Alliance, giving you a special hand for him. This is for Earth Day. It's gonna make history, save the planet, and do better things for the theater for the world. Green. Green, uh, I'm like green, it ain't easy being green, but you know what I mean. I'm on the scene and I'm trying to save the earth one day at a time. Oh yeah, when I lay down these rhymes, uh, revolution, the revolution is an American, is global.
mobile. I know I'm vocal. My vocal cords are always, always tired. That's all right, because I'm not fired. Yeah, it's Earth Day. Yeah, it's not my birthday. But we sip recyclable cups oh, when we're Thursday. Oh, yeah. And we use rechargeable batteries. And I say these things like, oh, degrees. Oh, yeah. Hamilton, we're trying to stop the revolution slowly, like, because it is Earth Day, like. So we try to conserve and reuse and reduce and recycle. And this is my title. I can't ham. give it away. This is the ham for ham or damn or man. I can't believe I just slam a man. Half a gram, and no, I'm not an Amsterdam, but I every paragraph I am. Broadway Green, trying to save your life, trying to save the life of my kids. And Sebastian going faster because it's spinning and turning. Yeah, we gotta stop the world from burning, huh? Uh, 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 <laughs> fantastic. Oh my gosh, amazing. Can you just remind everyone where they can find everything about your Earth Day events and also how they can find out more information about the Broadway Green Alliance? Absolutely. So uh, you can find us at broadwaygreen.com and on our website, we will have links out to where you can find both Earth Day events, the one this Sunday starting at 3.30 and then the one with all of the Broadway kids um, starting on, which will be on Earth Day on Wednesday. So Sunday and Wednesday for Earth Day, broadwaygreen.com and you can follow us on at, whoop, Facebook and Instagram, oh boy, uh, Facebook and Instagram <laughs> at Broadway Green Alliance. And we will have information about both of those Earth Days there. And also on our uh, social media, we have special appearances all the time from all of our green captains sharing what they're doing to be green. So it's really a treat to follow along there as well. And please follow along all of Camp Broadway social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of our fun stuff. And we will have some, uh, we're gonna do some posts also for Earth Day. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for sharing your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, and like I said, we will have another event on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. with the fantastic Tony Vincent. If you don't know him, look him up. He is great and we will talk to him on Thursday. Thank you, Molly. Thank you all, have a great day. Thank you.